my AAA. I finally gotten to the point in my life where people actually want to date me. And I have, what, like, 18? <laughs> uh, and I have... Maybe the, not for some people, come on. Well, uh, actually, we were called out like, oh, you're not anarchist, right? Because you believe in, like, the age of consent. Or, like, 18 as being, yes. like, a thing. I mean, 16 is the age of consent. Whatever. I'm just like, you know what? I don't want to risk that shit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 18. Yes. The age of consent is different in different countries as well. If yeah. you're from America and trying to call yourself for being pedos, try harder. Yeah. <laughs> and I have the energy and self-esteem to go for it. Been getting a few matches and go on a few dates, but after the first date, I've not been feeling super compelled to see anyone again. I haven't hooked up with any of the dates, and I feel like I'm some type of demisexual. We'll get to that. And it's like, these people, if any of them were to hit me up again and ask me out, I'd totally go out with them, but I don't feel compelled to initiate it. I'm not sure if that's because I just, I'm not so interested in them so that sacrificing time I could be seeing other friends or taking time for myself or if I am somehow having this need to feel wanted that I'm not a nuisance hence me waiting to hear from them again rather than asking them out again is this weird by the way my pronouns are they them thank you yeah thank appreciate you. that by the way because we never want to deliberately misgender someone 100% so and always do that if you feel um obliged to yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also because we have usually we are kind of uh working from the point of our generic general audience being cis dudes. Being cis dudes. So, um, and apologies if we, again, are cis normative in that. So it really helps us when someone does do this because we would never deliberately mistake someone. 100 Thank you. So two things to address in this. One thing, um, the being bored thing. The other thing, the demisexual thing. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this is where I'm going to lose my like woke points. <laughs> I don't feel like demisexuality is a thing. Same. I think some people take longer to form attachments with other people. I think also it depends on where you are in your life, how quickly you form attachments with people. If you want, if you feel like comforted by, by seeming yourself as divergent from a normality that is instant connection by taking that label, fine. But I would say there is no normality that is instant connection. I think sometimes you'll make instant connections, sometimes they don't. I do not make instant connections. I think you just haven't found people that you find hot. I, I, don't I mean, demisexuality is the, the idea that you need to get to know someone before you find them attractive, right? I thought it's just like you are attracted by people's intellect. intellect no, that's sepiosexual. Oh, shit! Yeah. Fuck that one up! Apologies! Yeah, yeah. I just know it's because of my comedy skit we did about no, this. Sorry, 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 demisexuals and sepiosexuals. Apologies, no, 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 fuck that no, one No, demisexuality is the idea that you only form sexual attraction once you've got to know someone. Gotcha. And there's like... A lot of queer people have decided, oh, like people under the umbrella have decided that this is a label. I I feel weird about this, not because I'm invalidating people that choose to use that label, but because I have at times felt that I I too take a long time to to like someone before I really like want to fuck them at times, and I've also not at times, and I feel like seeing it as a sexuality to me is just confusing. I just I don't just can't relate. I fully can't relate. To me, it's like yeah, very you form much it bodily... much more instantaneously than I do. Yeah. So this is so, I, I don't, and a lot, again, the, this hits the limitation of us as such, where I just can't. But like, look, if you want to use the label of demisexuality, that's fine, whatever. Like, I'm not going to like tell you that you can't. I would say that don't pigeonhole yourself into something that may just be the fact that you haven't found someone that really makes you wet your pants yet. Like, yeah, no, but that's, I, that, okay, again, as always, we have to go very meta on this. This is someone who has taken the time to write this question in, meaning yeah. this is something they really think about. Like, and this is something that's really bothering them and they're thinking, is it me? What is yeah. going on? I have made the effort. Okay, basically, I can date now. I'm like, I'm someone that is in the dating scene. I'm doing it, I'm trying, I'm going on dates, and yet I'm not clicking with anyone. Or, and yeah, I just don't feel like it. And yet they're attractive, they're hot, they're beautiful, and I cannot put myself out there. So now, I think... I wonder if there is some sort of, I mean, again, this is so difficult because like if I'm going to say, oh, what if it, there is some sort of guilt in you where you feel like you can only really like create sexual, you know, relationships with someone that you feel like you have a strong attachment with, which I think is this like Puritan uh, mindset that has been imposed on a lot of Western centric people. Uh, which I would like to think we need to challenge. However, that is me denying your sexual preferences, probably. So this is this is this is a, a, a difficult right. conversation. And you also have like asexual people that don't feel sexually Absolutely. at all. Like, 
So, I mean, the label I feel like is irrelevant. The idea that there's people you find attractive and sexy and whatever, but you're not interested, you can't be bothered. I've been there. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just oh fucking lazy God. as yeah. well. Like, sometimes I'm not interested in them, and that's, you can tell, if, like, but if you're, sometimes you're just like, yeah, I would, but actually it's winter, and it's cold, and I don't really want to leave the house, yeah. and... Or there's some beautiful, gorgeous people that are really photogenic and everything, and then you can hang out with them for ages, and it's just, there's not that... Yeah, there's not that connection. There's like, not that spark. And you question yourself for the rest of your life. That was a mistake. They would have taken me out of my rut and shit, but, yeah. like... But also, we've had a lot of conversations about the difference between, like, mine and Marianne's, like, sexuality, in a sense, in where, like... I often start dating people thinking, like, yeah, they're kind of nice, and I grow into, like, a very loving, affectionate bond with them, whereas I feel like you ha- you kind of have to start from the, like, they're really fucking amazing. Not amazing, point. they're really but, fucking like, hot. Yeah, but... Like, <laughs> and then I can find them interesting. I maybe. think you start at a higher level than I do. And so I, I generally build my, like, affection and trust and desire for someone throughout being with them. Oh, and I just... Being lagged. I, I get left disappointed after. <laughs> no, but, like, there are different approaches to things, and... If you feel like they're worth taking the time, and also if it's not inconvenient, honestly, like most relationships I've had have just been not that inconvenient. If any of the people I dated turned they have been me, inconvenient. they haven't. Oh, okay. If any of the people I dated when we first started dating had le- lived more than an hour and a half away from me, I don't fucking care how hot they are. I probably wouldn't have bothered. Different for you. A bit more than an hour and a half. I'm, I'm working. <laughs> yeah. That's next question. <laughs> so, again, like, I don't think there's like a standard or like a criteria it's something yeah. like you're trying to fit a certain criteria of like if you can't be asked to go and see someone then you can't be asked to go see someone also it doesn't i don't know it doesn't sound like they amuse you it doesn't sound like you leave the day being like i've had like you know an entertaining time yeah maybe you're just meeting people that are just kind of maybe bringing you down in one way or another or just not feeling you uplifted or there's not the same cat or i don't know i'm definitely now putting like the the, the, the stress on your partners which I probably shouldn't be no, doing it's like that. if they were to hit me up and ask me out I'd go out with them but I don't feel compelled to initiate it that's kind of a good sign yeah that I went I had this whole phase I've talked about in many of our videos but I went on a string of tinder dates in a kind of experiment over one January and I had nice chats I had good convos and a few times we were like yeah let's meet again let's meet again it fizzled out and I didn't wake up the next month being like gosh darn it I wish I'd follow that up mm-hmm. I woke up the next month being like oh if you really want to see someone again, you'll make time to do oh it. Oh my god, I was literally going to say that, and this is going to sound so whack, but like, when you know, you know. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you have to be in love or crazy about no. it, but... No! Just aroused! Yeah. Like, my... But not even that. Like, my last girlfriend, like, in Madrid, we went, we went on Tinder. It's my, my one Tinder relationship. And we went on one date, and we just clicked, and we hung out for, like, several hours. We went on another date, we just clicked. We hung out for several hours, and then it turned out we ended up dating long distance for five months, and... I guess because we just got on. Yeah. And I wasn't like, so like, oh my God, I want to be in your pants. I was like, I just really enjoy hanging out with you and I want to do it again. And also it's convenient because we both live in the same fucking city. Like, okay, okay. So to kind of create a bit of a parallel, and I'm again being really way too raw and personal here is something that I, I'm more than happy to talk about sex here. I am not happy to talk about the professional stuff here. And I'm going to do this now. And that's way too, to me, it was way more raw. I can talk about my labia all day long, but I cannot talk about the fact that, for instance, so, for the longest time, I definitely thought, you know, with all my portfolio, and for all, everything that I've done, you know, like, all my fucking awards, you know, like, as soon as I was gonna, like, just look for a job, it's just gonna come. It's just gonna, like, it's just gonna be that. So, so that's why I didn't do it for ages, because, of course, it's just gonna be that. And, yeah, let's put it in my cards on the table, and this is really bad. If a lot of you are, like, my games industry looking, like watching pals this is really embarrassing again i put a lot of the blame on me being like a union organizer and or just in generally being critical of the industry so again people google me and i've seen them looking on my like literally someone will google me from the company and i know where they are based literally will be like their area in some city in europe and they look at the fact that i wrote about labor rights in esports or something and then a couple of minutes later i get a no or something so i know there's that part of it but again basically i have been rejected as of late and I've put myself out there now and like to being to, to feel like so rejected is fucking terrible and so and it's only because I put myself out there that for like, for the longest time I did it right so it sounds a little bit again so to use that power is that like I think the reason why you're feeling right this now is because like for now you're like 
you know what, I am now ready to be in the dating scene. And yeah, it's kind of not necessarily working out. So what's going on? And yeah. and it is very much like a what's going on sort of question. You haven't found the job you really get, you really want. <laughs> yeah, you really want it. And, like, and then the most, the thing is that for ages, we think like, as soon as we're gonna try and start looking, it's gonna get it. But we're not gonna start, because of course we're gonna get it. So it's just like, mm. and then you do, and it's difficult. And then you begin question, begin question everything. I'm, I'm questioning about how I should like delete 80% of my social, I know, like my, my Google history altogether because I'm complicated and, and or fuck me, like having this sort of show also doesn't help. Um, yeah, I went to a conference, an academic conference, a royal academic conference a few months ago and a guy was like, a professor said to me, oh yeah, I've seen your sex show, it's all over Twitter. So that's a thing we have to bear in mind in our own world. That, I mean, that's a bit of a segue, but yeah, your, your, ba your basic analogy is, is a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, as in, like, for, for so long, you think you're going to just get it immediately yeah. as soon as you're going to start looking. You're ready to date, you'll find the perfect person. Exactly. But... And, like, and then it becomes complicated, yeah. and it's still complicated. But Hence, also... I'm going to launch Patreon soon, so look out for that. Look out for that. 10% is going to go for yeah. AAA. If I can watch your space. Um, but... No. 10% shouldn't go to AAA. It's all you. Yeah. No. No. no, we had this conversation. Not about ten percent. Oh, do you want more? <laughs> no, 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 no. That that is not even that is not even a conversation we're having. No, we we had this conversation. I feel like was it when like, we were really drunk in your bedroom? In the garage. Were we really I drunk? I think it was the morning. Was we I really drunk? drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the point is, you either when you're in the situation <laughs> that you're in, where you're ready to go, you're they are empty. That's Oh, they're not empty. That's my the new birth? ones. I've got some apologies. Okay. I've got some. Is it okay if I do yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the only thing? Um, where you you're like, yeah, I'm ready to get back in the scene, and it turns out that the first three jobs it's a very weird analogy. The first three jobs you applied for are like fine, but you could do better. Well, you yeah, could at do least better. Like, I got legit rejected, and I got into like third stage interviews and shit. Right. So the difference in the oh, analogy I'm that so you got rejected people. was you are not that interested. Like you might get the job, but maybe you want something. And like yeah, I've got a few offers, but they were shit. Right, so. Yeah. Yeah. As in, like, very, yeah. Anyways. I'm not interested in them in sacrificing time to see them, that I could be seeing other friends taking care of myself. That is the most fundamental thing. Like, you know when you're excited to see someone and you'd rather do that than, like, watch Netflix in your pants. And I wouldn't like to do that for many people. What's wrong with watching Netflix no, in your pants? No, I just said I wouldn't oh, do that for many apologies. people. Oh, apologies. Gotcha. Gotcha. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even some of my best beloved friends, when they're gotcha. like, hey, come to South London, I'm like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> I'd rather watch Netflix in my pants. <laughs> so, yeah, like, I think you can tell when you want to put the effort in. And whether or not you're demisexual, like, that's up to you to decide. I think it's, like, to the, like, chagrin of some of our viewers, possibly, I think demisexual is an unhelpful label because a lot of people experience demisexuality at different times in their dating life, and I... I think it's more of a preference than a dating, than a yeah, sexuality. It's a Feel free to complain about that and cancel me in the comments, but I think it's a label that can restrict you because I've been both. You can be both. I don't know. Yeah. Because also, if you think that you can only form a romantic relationship if you've been friends with someone for a long time, that also means that you end up forming friendships in a slightly um, duplicitous manner. Mm, good point. Where you might be Why? forming friendships in a hope that they become sexy friendships, which is like the opposite of what we talked about earlier in a video. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so good point. Something to bear in mind. I don't know. Yeah, I feel definitely. like all the demis are going to come at me, but you know what? If you want to come at me, watch my previous comedy skit where I rip the shit into you. Um, again, we'll be in the show. We'll be in the no, show notes. 